Today's show is brought to you by CBT Nuggets. You know how much we value ongoing education on the Cloudcast, and CBT Nuggets is exactly what Aaron and I wish we had when we were trying to get our certification early in our careers. CBT Nuggets is all about bringing a personalized touch to learning about cloud computing, virtualization, networking, DevOps, and much, much more. Whether it's their hands-on labs with personalized coaching or the online chat functions that come up with every instructor-led course, CBT Nuggets' team of experts is always there to help you get the most from your training and your pass to certification. You can check it all out at cbtnuggets.com slash cloudcast and sign up for a free trial. You get access to the full catalog of great training, including virtual labs, quizzes, and other premium features completely free for the first seven days. That's cbtnuggets.com slash cloudcast. Cloudcast Media presents from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive Cloudcast studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hope everybody is doing well, middle of July 2021, and we're back with another Sunday Perspective show. And today's show, we're going to focus on a question that tends to come up quite a bit, but we recently uh, had it asked again from a listener. Uh, I'm not going to do this as a mailbag, but uh, listener you know, wrote in and said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on cloud computing. Uh, I, I actually, they're a consultant. They work with a number of different companies and they're trying to help uh, the companies they work with kind of work through the cost of cloud computing. And they're trying to build some tools and understand some different ways of comparing, uh, you know, on-premises environments or private cloud environments to the public cloud. Um, and how, you know, they're, they're kind of looking for some, some guidance, some frameworks on how to do it. Uh, in particular, they're sort of asking me, like, is there a tool that compares these things? And it's a really interesting question because it's, uh, it's, it's not a sort of a, a simple nuance question. It's really a complex question um, because as we think about using, uh, just using technology, right? The, the ability to, to build uh, an application, uh, a multi-faceted application, it runs across multiple technologies, the ability to protect it and make sure it runs uh, highly available depending on what it's being used for um, involves a lot of different things. Uh, it may involve uh, you know, a half dozen, a dozen different technologies. It may involve multiple quote unquote locations or regions or data centers, um, you know, involves both, you know, operational capabilities, application capabilities, security capabilities. Um, so it's always a multifaceted sort of problem to solve. And probably the most complicated part is very rarely you ever comparing apples and apples to sort of direct apples and apples. So there's always a, a certain amount of kind of you know, gray areas, kind of massaging, you're having to do with the numbers, you're having to make certain assumptions. So what I thought I would do today is kind of walk through, you know, some ways to think about how you can do some comparisons. Um, because at some point, you know, anyways, we'll get to kind of get into it as we go along. But I kind of want to kind of give folks some frameworks, some things I've worked on, some things I've seen other people work on in terms of how they, they do some cost comparisons and, and kind of how they think through all the different aspects that are there. So we're going to get to, right, to that right after the break. Today's show is sponsored by Cloud Zero. For software-driven companies focused on growing margins, Cloud Zero is the only cloud cost intelligence platform that puts engineering in control by connecting technical decisions to business results. By analyzing cloud services like AWS and Snowflake, Cloud Zero provides real-time cost insights that help you maximize margins. Engineering teams can answer critical questions like, who are my most expensive customers? How much does this specific feature cost our business? What's the cost impact of re-architecting this application? With cost anomaly alerts via Slack, product-specific data views, and granular engineering context that makes it easy to investigate any cost, Cloud Zero is your complete cloud cost intelligence platform connecting the dots between high-level trends and individual line items. Join companies like Drift, Rabbit7, and SeatGeek by visiting cloudzero.com slash cloudcast to get started today. That's cloudzero.com slash cloudcast. Today's show is sponsored by Okta, the leading independent identity solution. Okta provides best-in-class authorization so your customers and workforce can safely access what they need most right when they need it from anywhere. Organizations around the world trust Okta's Identity Cloud to sign in, authorize, and manage users, whether it's employees, contractors, partners, or customers. And with Okta's developer tools, you'll never have to build authentication again. Our customizable code blocks are flexible and future-proof with easy-to-use APIs and SDKs, so you can do less coding and more shipping. 
Okta is dedicated to building the most reliable neutral identity platform because it means protecting more than a login. Identity is protecting people, their ideas, their work, their brilliance. It's protecting your future with confidence. Learn more at Okta.com. That's O-K-T-A.com. And we're back. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we're going to focus a little bit on kind of some some thought processes, some frameworks for how to think about comparing, uh, you know, costs between different cloud environments. And uh, this show is not going to be about kind of giving you a definitive answer. You know, uh, X is always 10% cheaper than Y. And we're not going to focus on, uh, you know, kind of cloud migration costs. I'll talk about them a little bit as we go along, but um, anytime we're talking about migrations, migrations have their own kind of set of complexities involved. So I'm not going to dive into that too much. Maybe we'll do that in another show, kind of, you know, what are the complexities involved with migrations? Because migrations obviously involve, you know, could be straight lift and shift. It could be modernizing an application. It could be moving from you know, an environment that, that you run today to a SaaS environment. So lots of different variables involved and retraining, relearning, all these other sorts of things. So we won't get into it there. Maybe we'll do this in a follow-up one now that I think about it. That's actually a pretty good topic. So anyways, let's talk about some of the things to consider. And so again, the original question was, you know, how do we go about comparing kind of cloud costs or uh, economics between um, different cloud projects? Now, one thing I will point out, and I'll put this in the show notes, um, Aaron and I over on our Cloudcast Basics show, which some of you may listen to and some of you may have heard us talk about it and you say, oh, that's, you know, that's way too simple. I'm, you know, I'm pretty advanced and expert. Uh, we did spend an entire sort of season uh, on cloud economics and kind of walking through this. So um, that's another great, uh, you know, set of six, seven shows. I think we did. They're all about 10 minutes long, maybe worth uh, your time taking a, taking a look at, digging into a little bit if you get some free time. So Let's talk about some of the most important things to kind of start to consider as you're thinking about comparing cloud costs, because a lot of times it's real easy to to read the headlines and, you know, or listen to the cloud vendors or, or whatever it is, um, you know, kind of the pundits who go, well, you know, things should just run in cloud. Cloud's going to be cheaper. They've been telling you that it's going to be cheaper for a long time. Uh, the reality is sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It, it depends on a lot of variables. Um, but what we want to kind of think about is a couple of things really up front. A couple of things will really dictate um, how you think about comparing costs, okay? The first one I would say is how long do you plan to, to run this project or do you expect this application to run? And when I talk about that, what I mean is, um, you know, in the old days, you – you know, you, you ran an application and it tended to run for a long, long period of time. I mean, there were there were exceptions to that, but you know, if you were running an email system or a CRM system or an HR system or uh, you know, corporate VPN or lots of different you know a communications system, those were intended to run you know as long as the business was going to run. They were intended to be you know kind of main services that that you delivered for IT. Maybe it was the website, maybe it was your e-commerce type of thing. But nowadays, uh, we see more and more types of computing and various types of, of business projects that run on a more short-term basis. So maybe they're not going to run for two years or they're not going to run infinitely, right? Like maybe you know they're only going to run for a month. Maybe they're going to be experiments. Maybe you're you're doing some testing. Um, maybe they just run for uh, overnight. Maybe that's a Monte Carlo simulation. And so you kind of need to – that's one of the first things to sort of take into consideration is how long are we doing this? And the reason I mention that is – it is more difficult to compare things that don't run long term um, between, say, private environments and public environments, or even between two clouds, um, because now you start getting into a lot of variability of uh, which application, uh, you know, technology am I using? You know, am I using something like a serverless? Am I having to run full VMs or containers? Um, you know, am I going to take advantage of? Uh, on-demand pricing? Am I going to do spot pricing, right? Like you get into a lot of those things. And some of those things you you basically can't compare on-premises because the concept doesn't really exist, right? Like there are some things that vendors have been trying to do both in the software and hardware space to try and emulate that. But but the level of granularity oftentimes isn't, um, you know, as tight as you might be able to see in the public cloud. And so you know, that's one of the first things is how long do we think we're going to run this? Is this more long term? Is this more short term? Is this experimental? Um, because that may come into play as to, you know, if you can even do an apples to apples comparison. 
The second thing that uh, I find quite a bit is, you know, how much change do you expect in the project, right? How much do you expect the project to grow, whether that's the number of users or the scale of the system? Do you expect it to grow up? Do you expect it to shrink back down? So is there there sort of, um, you know, expanded and, and reduced sort of scalability? And how frequently do you expect it to change? Now, the reason this is also important is that, um, you know, the cloud, one of the great things about the cloud, public cloud in particular, is is that flexibility, that scalability, that ability to, to kind of grow on demand. And, you know, the cloud, for the most part, in most cases, kind of gives you infinite scalability, infinite flexibility, probably much more so than you can easily do in your own data center, right? Now, if you're not growing it that much, you can make more apples to apples types of comparisons. But if you're growing at 50, 60% month over month, or you've got really big peaks uh, on a daily basis, um, you know, those are harder to sort of compare one to another uh, between a data center and the cloud, just because, you know, if you had to add an extra 10 racks every single day, that's a pretty complicated thing. It's a complicated thing to coordinate with a with a hardware vendor. It's complicated to coordinate with your facilities team. Those are some of the things where, you know, cloud probably is going to make more sense, but also it's very difficult to kind of compare the cost between them. The third thing um, that I would say is, you know, how complicated is your project, right? How many components are involved? How many elements are involved? And the reason I mention this is because oftentimes, um, you know, the thing that you're trying to work on oftentimes involves a number of things. It's, you know, it's got some number of compute resources for your application, your business logic, maybe your front end. Um, It's going to have resources for things like message queues or API gateways or, um, you know, streaming type of thing. You're going to have database, place where your data gets stored. Uh, you're going to have to deal with networking. You're probably going to have some amount of like security element, a load balancing element. There's probably, you know, a number of elements involved. And oftentimes we don't always understand the interaction between them, right? So for example, you know, if I'm talking about a database, yes, I have to manage the, you know, the database itself, maybe a license that goes to the database, depending on if I'm doing open source or proprietary. I've got to, you know, scale out uh, and, and scope out the, the computing resources for that database. I've got to be able to manage like network IO. So how much network bandwidth do I need into this thing? How much access do I need in terms of IO to storage, right? So oftentimes you're going to have some sort of high performance storage that lives behind this. Maybe it lives in that compute node, but maybe this database is is shared between a lot of things. Um, All those factors come into play. Then you have to take into consideration things like snapshots of the database, frequency of the snapshots. Do we replicate these into other locations? And those are things that maybe if you're just the DBA, you don't have to think about because you go, oh, well, I, you know, I'm using MySQL that doesn't really have a license to it. And maybe I care about the IO of the database, but I don't necessarily think about all those other things. And all those things will come into play whether you directly get a line item on your bill for them or somebody else does. Um, it's important to understand kind of the complexity and are you comparing the complexity of what you're doing, um, you know, say in one environment to the other. Uh, in some cases, you may just be able to drop into an environment that that provides those services for you. In other cases, let's say you're dropping into the cloud, you're probably going to pay for all those services on an individual basis. So again, it's helpful to understand how complex your environment is and and are you scoping your cost in terms of just what you care about or about the entire environment, right? Are you responsible for all those things? Now, um, That sort of goes hand in hand with this idea of how many of the things that you have to manage cost around or that you're trying to scope cost around, are you ultimately responsible for? Are you going to see a bill for? Or are there some set of shared services that the company provides um, and you just get to sort of take advantage of, right? Like you don't necessarily see a line item for. And these could be a number of things. These could be things that you completely take for granted, like DHCP or DNS, some sort of centralized service. They may be, you know, you plug into Ethernet and you get, you know, you get a gigabit Ethernet, you get a 10 gigabit Ethernet, but you're not necessarily billed, maybe you're billed on a per port basis, but you're not necessarily billed on a traffic, you know, volume basis where you're not, you you don't have to think about, you know, traffic patterns to, to traffic patterns 
come inbound? Do they blow outbound? Um, you know, how do I have to think about those things? Maybe you're really only concerned about the database, the number of database connections, Java connections or something. But it's important to think about all those things because if you don't understand them, um, you may not be able to make relatively comparative sort of cost things, right? So if if there are a lot of sort of centralized services that you just get in your data center today, um, but you your group is going to kind of spread out and, and split from central IT, you're going to get to make some of your own decisions. You may now be may now be taking on the cost of a lot of those centralized services that are have to run out of an AWS or an Azure or Google or whatever cloud provider you're using. So it's important to kind of understand. Uh, again, that scope of how big is my environment, my project, my applications, my depend, independent interdependencies, but also, you know, what do you kind of get it from a shared centralized service that maybe you aren't directly seeing as a bill that you may start seeing as a bill in the public cloud? And are you going to be able to kind of compare them apples to apples? Are you going to be able to to scope them? Are you going to be responsible for uh, maintaining those services, right? Even if it's a database as a service, you probably still need someone that you can call or reach out to if the database, you know, uh, goes haywire, has problems, the database gets corrupted. So again, got to kind of think about all those sort of things. Now, the next thing I had on my list was, um, you know, do you have the ability uh, as you're doing your comparisons to look at variable types of accounting costs? And you may be thinking about this and you go, look, I'm not an accountant. I don't care. What, What does that mean? Well, you know, if you look at the way the public cloud charges for things, right? You could look at 10 different Amazon or Azure or Google services and they all build differently, right? Compute might be uh, on an hourly basis, but it may also be on an hourly basis depending on how much CPU and memory you have. There may also be a charge for IO, but you know, let's say it's on an hourly basis. You may be looking at the network costs and the network costs are on a volume basis, how much traffic flows. You also have to look at how much traffic flows inbound versus outbound. When you're looking at storage, you're not looking at a time-based metric. You're looking at, again, a, a volume basis, how much uh, how much capacity, right? It's a capacity basis. But then you may also be looking at IO. If I'm trying to go faster, right? Do I have SSDs? Okay. That's another variable I have to have in. Um, the other thing is on a time basis, as you're trying to compare apples to apples, Am I comparing things that are on, you know, these sort of fixed time, an hour, a minute, a second, a one year annual thing? Or am I dealing with, you know, things that need variability? And and do I have to be able to mix and match those things, right? So, you know, for example, most on-premises environments probably can't get granular enough, don't have sophisticated enough monitoring and billing systems to do sort of sub-millisecond you know, AWS Lambda-like serverless capabilities, but maybe that's not really important to you, right? Maybe you just simply need the ability to do scale to zero, uh, you know, applications, but, you know, the ability to bill for it maybe isn't that important. So again, you know, you're looking at all the variables that are involved and can you compare them apples to apples? And if you can't, then you have to start sort of making some some trade-offs. Okay, I can't compare them apples to apples, What's some sort of comparison that I can make that are roughly in the same time frame or the same same concepts? Now, another thing to look at um, that oftentimes gets overlooked, and I joked about this on the uh, AWS Infinidash show, um, is networking costs, right? Oftentimes, teams uh, that run applications in their own data centers don't necessarily have to think about networking costs, maybe outside of how many ports they need on a, on an Ethernet switch, for example. Um, maybe they need uh, load balancing services. Maybe they need DNS services. But you know, they may not necessarily get charged uh, on an individual basis. They may just be able to have access to those services, right? Um, in most cases, they're probably not going to get charged uh, on a volume basis of how much traffic they churn up. Maybe they can. Maybe the organization's fairly sophisticated. But those are things that, um, you know, oftentimes within the data center, central IT doesn't necessarily have the ability to, to charge those back to application teams, um, but they have to plan with them. They have to go, hey, I need this sort of latency or this much bandwidth all the time, or I need, you know, internet access or not internet access. When you get in the public cloud, things get very different, right? Networking gets very, very granular. You really have to understand uh, how much traffic you have, the patterns. Is it inbound traffic? Is it outbound traffic? Is this traffic that's going to cross 
an availability zone? Is it traffic that's going to cross a region? Because those types of things are going to get charged differently. Is this traffic that comes in via a VPC, a VPN? Is it traffic that comes in via the internet? Am I having to use load balancing services, uh, NAT gateway services? Am I getting charged for the number of IP, IP addresses I have, right? Um, those are oftentimes going to be very different kind of uh, metrics and costs and variables and so forth. So again, um, probably not going to be able to get apples to apples between them, but you want to be able to figure out some way to try and normalize those things if, if at all possible. And again, this can be difficult because um, you know some application teams may not necessarily know up front, what their traffic patterns look like, what their load's going to look like, and and you have to make some considerations for that. Now, another thing that oftentimes gets overlooked: um, how or who accounts for the data center, right? Um, with AWS or Azure or Google, the the data center, the facilities are sort of built into the price, right? Like, um, you know, you don't get charged on a per rack basis, you don't get charged for the building, you don't get charged for AC or any of those sort of things. They're sort of built into the price of any uh, cloud service. Um, you know, within your own data center, you may or may not get charged for that, right? Like you may or may not get charged for racks. You may or may not get charged for some way of depreciating the uh, HVAC system or the actual building itself. So again, those are somewhat difficult things to, to kind of compare uh, apples to apples. The next thing, and this really gets into sort of uh, experimentation, this gets into user experience, this gets into how you get started is, as you're looking at your comparisons, is there any expectations of some sort of free tier, some sort of um, way to get started without any cost being involved, right? And this is, again, something that, um, you know, in most of the major clouds, uh, there is some sort of free tier for almost every service. So, I mean, you can kind of experiment. You probably can build something somewhat useful, probably not at scale, but but something somewhat useful without really getting into too much cost. Now, that's a little more difficult when you're doing things on-premises because you're probably typically going to have to be working with your vendor. You're probably going to be working through some sort of POC or some sort of trial. And oftentimes, um, you know, it's not a permanent free environment you can create, but it's some sort of temporary environment. And that might be all you really need. Um, but again, you want to consider like how much of our learning curve, how much of our onboarding, how much of our, um, you know, experimentation is considered to be something you can do in a free trial versus something that you have to work through as a POC or a trial or a try and buy or something else, you know, with a vendor or with downloading free software or whatever it might be. So again, different ways of looking at similar concepts. And then one last thing that I'll include in here, and I'll kind of wrap this up because I know I've been talking about a lot of these different variables, is something that oftentimes doesn't get considered um, unless you work in certain industries. And that is, um, you know, if you're thinking about, well, you know, can I do on-demand kind of billing or can I do any sort of um, system, you know, work with a system that's going to audit what I do uh, and then be able to turn that into uh, pricing, costing, those types of things. Um, do you have to be, you know, or do you have the ability to be connected to the public internet, right? Uh, whether it's your application or some sort of backend system or use something that really needs to be sort of, you know, private, uh, you know, lot, uh, what we call it, uh, air gapped, if you will, or, or, you know, blocked from the internet. And the reason I mention that stuff is if you have no mechanism to do that and you're working with somebody, uh, some sort of vendor or consultant or, or whatever, who is going to try and charge you or create a system that does more on demand type of billing. So you can, you know, kind of make it apples to apples. They're going to have to have some sort of access to the, to the metrics, to the telemetry, to the usage data and so forth. And so, you know, you have to sort of consider your environment. Are we even able to, to compare these things? Now, if your majority of what you do can't connect to the internet, then using the cloud may or may not be a real option. Although, you know, there are a number of cloud services that are sort of not uh, public facing. But again, that's another area in which you may have a very different environment from one to the other. And you have to figure out some way that, you can either normalize it or, or you know, make it kind of fit into the model that you're trying to create. So I know I went through a lot of different things there. I uh, went through a number of things that, um, you know, in some cases are very difficult to compare apples to apples, right? Um, you know, by no means is this intended to be a, a show that's kind of trying to drive you to say, hey, you know, always use the public cloud or always use the private cloud. I think we've reached a point, um, a couple of nice things are now out there. There's a lot of 
compatible technologies such that if you do want to start in one place, you can move to another without too, too much change um, if you're going from like to like technologies. Um, we're seeing in a lot of companies and a lot of different uh, user groups and so forth who are able to you know, have some level of experimentation. Um, maybe they use the cloud for that. Some level of uh, you know, work that goes on for shorter periods of time, others that go on for long periods of time. So they're also trying to figure out you know, what's my mix, right? How much of what I do has to fit into these different categories of how an application is built, how I consume resources, and what makes the most sense for me. And in some cases, you know, even saying, hey, I want to get out of an application and move into something that's completely managed by somebody else, you know, a SaaS type of environment. Again, that's another different um, calculation, different set of modeling you have to do. And again, we talked about some of that in those uh, those uh, cloud economic sessions with uh, Cloudcast Basics as well. So hopefully that give you some things to think about um, in terms of, you know, how am I going to, if I'm having to build um, some sort of financial model, if I'm trying to do some sort of comparisons, um, and it seems like it's sort of complicated. Well, don't don't feel like you're alone. It is somewhat complicated, and this isn't, you know, done on purpose by vendors or whatever. We're really just um, comparing two different types of environments. Some of it are more legacy, some are more modern, um, and you have to sort of consider those types of things. Take a lot of different things into consideration. But I think the things I talked about today are the areas that I find the most that oftentimes um, are really important. They're really fundamental. They're really basic but oftentimes they can be a little confusing and it's, it's important to sort of just know going in, okay, am I going to be able to make comparisons? Is it going to be more difficult to make comparisons? And and then where do I have to think about ways to somehow normalize it such that you can make a reasonable comparison? Maybe it's a red apple to a green apple, but they're both sort of apples, if you will. So anyways, with that, I'm going to wrap it up as always. Thank you for always listening to the show and thank you for listening to the Sunday Perspective show. We really enjoy doing them. It gives us a chance to uh, to kind of you know give a different spin on what we do on the Wednesday show with the interview. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, as always, thanks for helping us grow the show. Thanks for telling a friend. Thanks for um, you know, giving us your time every week and, and especially giving us your feedback in all the places you get your podcast. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up and we will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media. 